Hey, what's happening guys? Good morning and thank you for tuning in to Rules for Rebels. Today is going to be merch earnings for September. Today is October 3rd, 2018. Um, and I don't know if you guys can see this here, but the, the reason we're doing this kind of weird, I actually made this video yesterday. I was just getting ready to post it. Um, and as I so often do, I accidentally had the sound turned off on my screen recorder. Um, so I had a whole video of just static. Um, and I already deleted my, my Excel spreadsheet. So uh, that's why you're kind of looking at a video of the video. Um, but we're basically today, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be going through September numbers, uh, kind of comparing them to August, uh, just sharing some other merch news, updates, things like that. I think if you guys didn't realize it already, uh, you'll be excited to hear that we are officially in Q4. Uh, Q4 is, you know, the last quarter of the year, the last quarter for business, tends to be one of the better months for e-commerce as a whole and also for Amazon merch as well. So everybody should start seeing uh, their sales kind of picking up here as we get out of kind of the slow, uh, slow sales season of summer and, and kind of start moving towards the holiday season and Christmas. Um, I also have some other kind of merch updates and announcements and things like that. One thing I'll talk about a little bit later in the episode, uh, but I actually have uh, two uh, coaching sessions set up. Um, one with Glenn Zubia of Merch Minds and Hustler Hacks, a YouTube channel. Check him out if you haven't seen him. And I also have another one with uh, Chris Green, who's uh, kind of a big figure in the merch world. Kind of a controversial guy, uh, but kind of a very, very big figure in the merch world. And it was kind of funny. I was looking for, you know, some different entrepreneur events and seminars and things like that going through, going on in my area. And I saw one going on in Chicago here later this month. And uh, it seems like they're going to be doing some seminars and have some speakers and things like that. But also they have experts in Amazon Merch, Amazon FBA, private labeling, eBay sellers, like experts from all different areas of, of e-commerce and entrepreneurship. And a lot of these people have volunteered their time. So I think there's one day uh, where pretty much all day long they're going to be doing 20 minute long coaching sessions and it's completely free. So I thought, you know, if I, I can get some some time to kind of pick the brains of some big merch sellers uh, for 20 minutes completely free. I'm, I'm all about that. So uh, I may try to see if we can get Glenn on a live stream or if me, me and him can maybe collab or do something. I was going to see if maybe I can take him for a drink or something afterwards. Um, so if we do that, I'll, I'll try to post it either here or on Instagram. But without further ado, let's get into the numbers. So uh, September we had, uh, sorry, I got junk all over my screen too, uh, 231 sales. Um, I accidentally flipped uh, revenue and commissions here, but total revenue was $4,371. Uh, total commissions, $1,034. I had eight returns and six cancellations. Uh, I know a lot of people are talking about, you know, cancellations and returns are up. It's pretty standard for me to have them. I mean, Amazon doesn't necessarily have the best quality t-shirts. They don't always print them right. Sometimes they don't fit right. Sometimes the sizing is odd. I know a lot of people get really hung up on returns and cancellations. There's really nothing you can do about it. I mean, make sure your designs are on point. Make sure your designs are, are crisp and clear and centered. Uh, but I mean, outside of that, you don't have any control over how Amazon prints or whatever else. So, you know, don't sweat that too much. Uh, if we look back at August, in August, we had 239 sales. So a few more than September. Uh, total revenue for August was 4557 about 200 bucks more than... Uh, then for September and then the commissions, uh, it says 1,068 here. When I was actually pulling the stats for this video, um, analytics were, were unavailable. But one thing that I thought was kind of interesting last month, normally I pull my numbers and make these videos before the official numbers come out. And normally the numbers that I pulled just off the analyze page, um, are, I would say 40 to $60 lower once I get fi fine learning. So, you know, normally if this says I made 1,068 by the time fine learnings come out, I might be at a thousand bucks, a thousand twenty bucks. Um, one thing that was kind of interesting about last month, it was the first time ever that this happened, but the actual earnings were actually more than what I had pulled. I, I think here it says a thousand sixty-eight. I had made like eleven thirty-four. So I actually wound up making like sixty or eighty bucks more. Um, so again, th these numbers right here are an official earnings. I would say, you know, fifty bucks, give or take, up or down. Um, let's see. I had a couple notes of, of things I kind of wanted to talk about. One, one thing that I want to improve on here. Um, and I know I can't scroll through my whole Excel list here since we're, we're just looking at a, a screenshot. Um, but, uh, if, if you see here, I have one shirt that sold 107 designs. Another one sold 11. I think when I scrolled down yesterday, I had another one at 13, another one at nine. Uh, but outside of that handful of shirts, most of my shirts are doing one, two, three, four, maybe five. Um, if something were to happen and this 107, uh, sale shirt were to slow down, were to be removed, were to kind of just fall out of favor, 
my merch numbers would go from being like pretty respectable at a thousand bucks a month to like next to nothing. So one thing I want to work on is kind of trying to diversify my sales, trying to kind of get sales up. Um, and I am using kind of ads right now to try to do that. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a, in a minute and kind of how to run ads and things like that. Um, but I'd like to try to get some more sales to some of these shirts. Some of these shirts that are selling, you know, 8, 10, 12, 13 designs, I'd like to get those up to 20, 30, 40, 50, heck, 100 if possible. Um, another note I had, pop socket sales have kind of slowed down for me. Uh, when pop sockets first rolled out, man, I think in the first two weeks I'd sold like 18 of them. Sales were really good. <coughs> Um, I admittedly haven't been putting as much effort into pop sockets, but sales have kind of slowed down. I have two, three, four designs that'll sell a couple a month. Uh, pop socket sales aren't crazy for me. I think this month I sold 16 pop sockets. Um, I kind of already mentioned this in references, but we are officially in Q4. Um, that's really exciting to me. I, I think we can kind of expect to see probably a 10 to 30% increase in sales. Um, we'll see if this December we have that December shutdown where things tend to shut down from about December 10th to December 11th, uh, through, you know, kind of towards the end of the month. So my goal right now is to kind of start maxing out shirts, try to get tiered up, try to max out some more designs just in case that winds up happening. I have more stuff live. Um, I forgot to mention right now I am at tier 3000 of those five, of those 3000 shirts. I have 2,539 listed now. Uh, we talk about tinfoil hat theories a lot. Tinfoil hat theories are these kind of like anecdotal things that we all kind of know about Amazon merch, but that Amazon merch hasn't really come out and said. And one of these tinfoil hat theories is that once you get above 80% of your upload threshold, they tend to tear you up. So, um, you know, 80% of 3,000 would be 2,600, or is it? No, 2, 4, 6, I'm sorry, 2,400. Um, so the other day I crossed above 2,400. I'm hoping slash expecting uh, to get tiered up within maybe the next week or 10 days here. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to tier me up to. Traditionally, you would go from like 1,000 to 2,000, 2 to 4, uh, I believe 4 to 6, 6 to 8. Um, when the Amazon UK and Amazon DE rollout happened, pretty much everybody got an automatic tier up to kind of uh, accommodate those, those new listings that they were automatically porting over. Um, so I had just tiered up to 2,000. They quickly gave me 3,000. Uh, so I'm not sure whether I'll go from 3 to 4 or whether I'll go from 3 to 6. But uh, either way, could use some new designs here. Uh, let's see. More of my sales are from a handful of shirts. Uh, so I am running AMS ads. So for anybody who doesn't have AMS ads or isn't really, like, super familiar with them, uh, back on, I believe it was maybe the 12th of September, uh, Amazon announced that they're rolling out AMS ads for Amazon Merch. Now, previously... There was a way to, to run AMS ads. People were doing it, but it was kind of a workaround. You needed a Vendor Express account and an AMS account, and you kind of connected them. I could never get the thing working. So when this announcement came, this, this will be my first time running ads. The first day they rolled it out, I got the code on the bottom of my screen. I went through the steps. I had previously had an Amazon KDP uh, account, so I had an AMS account uh, attached and tied to that. Um, so I kind of had to go through an alternative sign-up process. Wound up signing up, got my two confirmation emails, bang, right away. Uh, it did take about another two weeks, maybe a little bit longer than two weeks, to get that final confirmation email. I've heard a lot of people saying that they're getting $50 in free ad credits. I didn't get any, but whatever. Uh, let me know if you guys did. Um, started running ads, and let's see here. So to date, uh, I've spent $38.93 on ads. Uh, they've brought me $174.59 in sales. So that works out to about 8.7 sales. Now, if we take 8 times 538 per shirt, these are just kind of rough numbers, but that gives me about $43.04. So um, probably a little bit more than that, but essentially I've spent $38 on ads. It's brought $43 in, in profits. Now, that's not huge numbers. I would like to spend $38 in ads and bring in like $90 in profits. You know, I'd like to have the numbers working a little bit more in my favor, but as long as the ads are running at profit, it may still be worthwhile running them. Now, here, here's one thing I'd like to explain a little bit for, for anyone who hasn't really run ads in the past. Now, ideally, you want to spend $5 to make $10. You want to spend $20 to make $40, right? You want to make money on your ads. One thing to keep in mind with Amazon Merch and kind of the search algorithm of Amazon and things like that is the more shirts you sell, the higher your shirt is going to rank in search. The more shirts you sell, the higher your BSR score is going to go. The higher your, B, your BSR score goes and the higher you rank in search, the more shirt sales you're going to get. So even if you, you know, ideally I wouldn't like to be running ads at a break even. That, that's kind of towing a, a pretty thin line there. But even if you're running ads at a break even, 
Uh, if you're bringing on sales that you wouldn't have otherwise had, you're increasing the BSR score and the sales rank of your shirt. And hopefully that's going to equate to some more organic sales as well. So even if you're only breaking money, breaking even on the ads, keep in mind that may be showing you higher in search overall. That's not really something that we can track, but that may be bringing you more sales. So as long as you're break even or profitable, it's probably uh, worthwhile to, to keep running them. Uh, one thing I've been doing is testing ads and like literally after one or two days, if it spends some money and it's not profitable right off the bat, I'm just canceling the ad right away. Uh, I've had several ads that, you know, from day one are making money. I think the, the first day I was running ads, uh, I spent 92 cents and made a sale at $1.38. Continued to be pretty good, and now things are starting to level off. Um, and that's kind of what I'm hearing from a lot of other people, too. It kind of starts off hot, and then it kind of starts starts kind of leveling off after that. Uh, I've been running the automatic targeted ads, which means I'm not selecting the keywords. I'm just letting Amazon um, kind of go ham and, and, and kind of target them themselves. A lot of people are advising against that. It's, it's worked out pretty good for me. <coughs> I have started running some more test experiments, um, uh, essentially selecting my own keywords. And here's one word of advice if you guys are going to do your own keywords. It's very easy to start losing money with ads. It's very easy to start overspending. So uh, I'll give you guys one example of like what you do want to do and what you don't want to do. So let's say I have a Dachshund shirt, right? It's a dog shirt, Dachshund wiener dog. Um, so let's say I have a dog, uh, a dachshund shirt. Now, when I'm selecting my keywords, I might do dachshund shirt, dachshund t-shirt, cute dachshund t-shirt, wiener dog t-shirt. Um, that's good because anybody searching for wiener dogs or dachshunds is a potential buyer of my shirt. What I don't want to start doing is running keywords for general terms like dog, puppy, pet owner, uh, doggies, thing, things like that. Because somebody who owns a golden retriever is not going to buy a dachshund shirt. Somebody who owns a bulldog is not going to buy a dachshund shirt. So by targeting keywords like dogs or puppies or, or kind of more pet, pet owners, more general things, I'm getting views and impressions and clicks from people who aren't going to buy a dachshund shirt. So keep everything very, very focused and very, very specific. Um, this is getting a little bit more complicated. You can also start using negative keywords. So you could do, I want to run ads for people who search dachshunds, but not dogs, or I want to search for dachshunds, but not golden retrievers. Uh, but that would be my one piece of advice. You know, if, if you start doing keywords, don't go overboard. Keep it simple and keep your keywords very targeted and very focused. Um, and then I, I think I already talked about the last point, the uh, the coaching session with uh, Chris Green and Glenn Zubia. Uh, excited about that. So if you guys have any questions you'd like me to ask them, feel free to drop them in the comment section below, and I'll make sure I ask those during my session as well. So um, Sorry about kind of the odd format for this. I forgot to turn on the uh, the sound recorder for, for today's video. So that's why we're kind of going off this sheet right here. Um, and I know people always ask me about when I have weird things on my screen. So what this is right here, I'm sure someone's going to ask about it. It's a program called TubeBuddy. It's for YouTube. It kind of does all different features. But on any video I, I go on, I can see analytics of the video, of the creator, etc. It helps me make thumbnails. Um, it helps me like sort comments so that I can try to respond back to more people, things like that. So that's what that is if anyone's uh, anyone's wondering. But that's September numbers, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. Uh, and I'd love to hear from you how your merch sales is going, how your merch journey is going, um, and anything else you have to add. So drop those comments below. We'll catch you on the next one, guys.